All right, in this video, we're going to show you how to divide fractions when you have common denominators. So to do that, we're going to take a look at these first four questions where the fractions all have common denominators and divide those fractions by looking at their visual representation. And then we'll apply those ideas to fractions that don't have common denominators. So let's start with our first question, 3 one fifths divided by 1 -fifth. So let's turn our fraction notation on first, and we have 3 one fifths right there. And we're going to divide by 1 -fifth right here. And so we can see that 1 -fifth physically goes into 3 one -fifths three times. So now let's look at 6 one -eighths divided by 3 one -eighths. So there's 6 one -eighths and we're going to divide by 3 one eighths. So we want to see how many times this piece goes into our 6 one eighths. And you can see that's two times. Now let's look at one where the answer won't be a whole number. 4 one six divided by 3 one six. So there's 4 one six and there's 3 one six. So we want to see how many times this piece goes into 4 one sixth. So we can see that's going to be a little bit more than one piece, but not more than two. And if we take the fraction signs off, we can see that that piece is, that whole piece is made up of three equal pieces. And so we have one whole piece and one of those three equal pieces, so one and one-third. And that is the same as four one-thirds. Finally, let's take a look at one where the answer is not only not a whole number, but less than one. So two one-thirds divided by five one-thirds. There's two one-thirds, and there, and there is five one-thirds. So now this is what we're dividing into our two one-thirds. And so you can see that it's definitely less than one. And so when we turn off the fraction symbols, we can see that this whole piece is made up of five equal pieces of which we're asking ourselves what proportion of our whole is this piece. And we can see that it is two out of the five pieces, or two one-fifths. So now that we've done these questions, you might ask your students if they see any patterns emerging. You might have to give them a few more examples of dividing fractions with common denominators, but hopefully they will notice that when dividing a fraction with a common denominator, there are similar related questions that have the same answer when just dividing whole numbers. That is, 3 one-fifths divided by one-fifth is the same as 3 divided by 1. Or 4 one-sixth divided by 3 one-sixth is the same as 4 divided by 3. In fact, 6 divided by 3 will yield the same answer as 6 one-eighths divided by 3 one-eighths and yields the same answer as six of anything divided by three of those same things, all being equal to two. So by looking at our fractions in terms of their unit fraction, the division becomes as simple as dividing whole numbers. So now let's take a look at some questions when we don't have common denominators in both fractions. So first we'll look at three one-halves divided by four one-fifths. So there's three one-halves, and we're dividing by four one-fifths. There's four one-fifths. So we want to see how many of these fit into our three one-halves. So we can see that it's one and almost two, but not quite two of them. So in the same way as before, we're going to break this up into some equal pieces, but we want our equal pieces to be the same size in both our four one-fifths and our three one-halves. So let's put our scale on here and start to break this up so that we can have the same size pieces in our three one-halves 
as we do in our four one-fifths. And so we can see our four one-fifths is broken up into eight equal size pieces right here. And in our second piece, it's not quite a whole, it's seven of those eight pieces. So four, so that's one and seven one-eighths. That's doing the question without looking at common denominators. So let's look at this question now in terms of common denominators. So we can rewrite three one-halves as 15 tenths and four one-fifths as eight one-tenths. So now let's divide 15 one-tenths by eight one-tenths. So here's our tenths and there is 10 of them. There's our 15 one-tenths and we're dividing that by eight one-tenths. So let's take our fraction designations off and we can see that as before, here's our whole, and we're seeing how many times that whole can go into this piece here. This whole is broken up into eight equal pieces. And as we saw before, it goes in one time and seven one-eighths of that second time. So three one-halves divided by four one-fifths is the same as 15 one-tenths divided by eight one-tenths, or one and seven one-eighths, and that's the same as 15 one-eighths. So let's take a look at this last question, three one-fourths divided by five one-thirds. So here's our three one-fourths, and we're dividing by five one-thirds. So we can see that we're definitely going to get an answer that is less than one. And we're basically asking ourselves, what proportion of this piece is made up of this piece? So we can see that our answer is going to be somewhere less than a half of this whole piece. And so to do that, we're going to break up these pieces into equal size smaller pieces, pieces that we can use the same small piece in both fractions. And so we can see that this whole piece is made up of 20 of these smaller pieces, of which in this small piece representing 3 one fourths, there are nine of these small pieces. So that means our answer is nine of the 20 pieces or 9 one twentieths. So let's redo this question now considering the original fractions with common denominators. So 3 one fourths can be rewritten as 9 one twelfths and 5 one thirds can be rewritten as 20 one twelfths. So let's rebuild our two fractions now and to get twelfths we don't have twelfths available to us right now. So we are going to add twelfths in. And so we want our original question, which was nine one twelfths. So there is nine twelfths. Let's put fractions in there temporarily. And we want to divide that by twenty one twelfths. So there is twelve one twelfths, and we need eight more. So there is our. 21 twelfths, so we have 9 twelfths divided by 21 twelfths, and we can bring, so that's our whole of 21 twelfths, and we're asking the same question, what proportion of 21 twelfths is our 9 twelfths, and you can see that it is 9 of the 20 pieces. So there are 20 pieces in our whole, and the proportion that we are talking about has nine of them. And so we can see that regardless of whether we're talking about questions that originally start with common denominators or questions that can be rewritten with common denominators, the pattern that seems to exist is when dividing two fractions, if they have common denominators, just divide the numerators as if they're whole numbers, and that gets the same answer. 
So this gives a conceptual and visual idea of how dividing fractions with common denominators can simplify the concept of dividing fractions.